Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm doing a follow-up video of my Clipper Speed video from last week. One of my viewers asked about Clipper Auto Speed, so let's go ahead and take a look. I'll be honest, I really wasn't familiar with this macro, and one of my viewers made a comment about it and asked why I didn't use this. And I'm actually pretty impressed by this macro. What it does is it automatically, once you configure and install stuff, automatically calculates the speed. It takes a couple minutes, but it actually goes through and calculates the acceleration and the velocity for you. Now, according to the GitHub page, this is saying this is more safe than Elias's test. I'm not sure about that, but I thought, let's go ahead and give this a go and run through this and see how it works and see how good it works. Particularly, I have my Mercury 1 here, which I haven't optimized for speed. So let's give that printer a go. So to start off, I've called up the directions from the GitHub README on the left. And then on the right, I have my terminal open. Now, you should be able to SSH into your Clipper installation. In my case, I'm going to type SSH. I'm going to type my username, which in the case of this printer, I'm using a CB1. So I'm going to do BQ at m1.local. I'm going to type in the password, and I'm currently on the CB1. We're going to go down here, and let's, let's update the CB1 while we're here. And so to update that, we're going to type in sudo apt get update. And then once that's finished, we're going to type in sudo app get upgrade. And that should ask us if we want to upgrade the system if there's any updates available. If there's no updates available, go right back to command prompt. In my case, there are updates available. So I'm going to type in capital Y and enter. And this will take a couple of minutes to install the updates. So as you can see, this is finished now. And what I do at this point is I like to go ahead and reboot my system. So I'm going to type in sudo reboot. And we're going to, that's going to kick us off the CB1 and put us back to our machine command prompt. So we're going to give it a minute and let the CB1 reboot. And we'll go right back. If you don't have a CB1, by the way, if you're using Raspberry Pi, it's the same process. Okay, so I've logged back into the Pi. And down here, so we're going to do the automatic installation. Now, there is a manual installation. We're just going to do the automatic installation. The easiest thing to do is to copy the code. So I'm just going to copy that block, go over to my SSH window that currently is logged into my device running Clipper. Could be a CB1, could be a Raspberry Pi, could even be a desktop. And I'm just gonna paste that code in and hit enter. And that will download the GitHub repository, install matlibplot, and then it's running the install script. And this will take a couple minutes. So as you can see, I've completed the install and back to the command prompt. So I'm going to reboot the system, sudo reboot. And that just verifies that everything is restarted. Now I just want to show you a quick trick here before we log back on to the device. To clear the terminal, I can just type in the clear command. And sometimes that's helpful if I have a whole lot going on on screen. And I think particularly doing this video, this might help you see the commands. So now that I've cleared it, I'm just going to use the up arrow, find my command, and log back in to the 
CB1. Now, looking at the directions, it looks like all the rest of the instructions are simply on the configuration of the printer. So let me pause, let's call the printer up and we'll work on that via mainsail. Okay, so I'm back over in mainsail and I'm gonna switch back and forth here. I'm gonna go to my moonraker.config, scroll down, and we're going to add some code here. I'm gonna go back over the directions and here's the moonraker update manager code so let's copy that back over to the mercury one and we're just going to paste that in and i'm just going to save it i don't need to restart just yet and we're going to go back over to the printer.config and we need to drop some code in here so looking at the readme scrolling down and here's the only line of code I need to add, the auto underscore speed. So we'll, let's add that right up towards the top so I can see it. I'm just going to add it by these other includes. Or better yet, let's add that down here towards the bottom under my macros. I'm going to add this to the very bottom of the printer.config. At this point, I'm going to save and restart, and I'll let Clipper reboot. Okay, so my Clipper instance is back up and running. Looking at the directions, it says to home the printer, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to do a home all. So my printer is now homed. We're just going to go over the console and paste in the auto speed command. And this, according to the directions, will just run the default test and should let me find the max acceleration and the max velocity. And reading the directions, I'm going to point out, so it should take about 10 minutes to do all this. So we'll go ahead and run it and see what it does for us. Now, on my printer, it is. I have the Hydra installed, so it's leveling the bed right off the bat. And so we'll let that go, and I'll come back as it starts the test. It's the first things it's doing is testing the end stop variance. And now it looks like it's going to find the acceleration on the X and Y. So we're just going to let this run, and then we'll come back. Now, as I'm watching this, this is doing a lot less movement than a YSYS test. And if you remember in my video last week, I actually had a case where I didn't have it plugged in totally right. And it actually, the printer actually shook out the plug. Again, I'll continue to let this run. I'll be honest, this took less than five minutes to run. And if you look here, the acceleration and the velocity this is recommending are extremely high, um, which I find interesting. Now, just to test this again, I'm going to type in the command again and let it run. Um, this time, I'm just going to leave my camera on so you can actually see it run the whole time. And then we're, we're going to test with these accelerations. We'll see if we can get a print going. So I'm going to start the test, and let me switch over to my tripod cam so you can see the printer a little bit better. And literally, what's it? What it's doing is finding the X and Y accelerations right now. Now, once it finds the, the acceleration on the 
X and the Y, it'll switch over to velocity. And camera a little bit. And let's switch over and just look at the console. So in this view, you can see that that's so right now it's still on the acceleration, so it's running this multiple times. So now it's found the acceleration, and now it's doing the velocity. So it looks like it does each five times. It does it on the X and Y axis. I apologize, the camera is a little jerky here, and maybe that's because of what it's actually running. Now, if we look at these results, and I'm actually amazed, I believe we are getting the same results twice in a row. So I'm going to try printing with these acceleration values. Now, I think in my next video, I'm probably going to try comparing these head to head and see what happens, both the Clipper Auto Speed and Elias's tests and see which one, how close they both get, because now I'm really curious. I've loaded into my slicer a calibration cube, and I'm just going to print this. Now let's check to make sure I didn't save any settings. So all my motions and numbers are still the same, the defaults I have in the printer. And in the printer.config, I'm going to slice this and then I'm going to send it to the printer. So this will print, and then we'll see what this cube looks like, and then come back with the new accelerations. So this will take a couple minutes to print, at least according to this, at least 15 minutes. And so we'll have two cubes to compare, one with the old acceleration and velocity that right now is taking 15 minutes, and then one with the new acceleration and velocity and hopefully that won't change quality and maybe we'll increase the speed some. So I've completed my first square and now I'm going to make the changes to my printer. I'm going to go to the printer.config and let me look at my text file and we'll copy the acceleration, the velocity, and I'm just going to paste these in here. I'm going to change and store my old values just in case. And this the velocity is 1339. The old is 300. I have the 9000 saved. Let's paste in the 78300. So now we're going to save and restart Clipper. While that's restarting, let's go over to our slicer. So in the slicer, we actually have two different places we can change these settings. We go up to the top here, and let me just change this. We're going to go to the printer settings and then go to motion ability. And we're going to change the maximum speed of X and Y and the maximum of acceleration of X and Y. And I went ahead and changed the max acceleration when extruding and retracting as well. So I've done that, so that's good. And then let's take a look at 
the speed of the printer. If we scroll down, we're looking at the speed settings, normal printing, we're going to change that to our 78,000. And I'm basically going to change that for all these values. And maybe I'll go 50,000 for the first layer. And the same for the top surface. And travel, I'm going to bump up that 78,000. Now I'm going to save this to auto speed. So that way I'm not getting rid of my old settings. Hit OK. And I'm going to slice the plate. I'm saving about three minutes now with my new acceleration and velocity settings. I did have to turn on a brim here, and I had a brim on the original cube as well, just to make sure the test was equal. So I'm going to let this print, and then we'll take a look. Okay, so I finished both my cubes. This cube is with my original settings. This cube is with the new accelerations. Now what I'm noticing is, and it's a little hard to see, you'll see a little bit more ghosting here. And I'm also seeing along this edge, a little bit more of the seam. Looking at the print overall, maybe there's a little bit of a mess up back here, but the quality is pretty good. Now you might sit there and say, oh, the bottom doesn't look right. That's where I had the brim. What I found was with these new accelerations, you 100% need a brim. Now looking at this, I'm actually thinking I'm probably going to keep the new acceleration and just go through and retune the printer. I'm pretty sure I can get rid of that ghosting, address that. I could probably address a little bit of this seam issue. So I really like Clipper Auto Speed. It seems to work really well. Now I will note this is right now strictly for Core XY printers. So you don't want to use it on a different printer. You want to stick again with those Core XY. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to hearing from you. Talk to you again soon. Hi. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one-hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.